Today we're going to look at a way to organize and keep track of the different types of changes of state. And we're going to make a change of state triangle. So it's time to learn now. Today you're going to be learning about changes of state. And uh, we're going to continue this from the lesson we did last week. Uh, and it will uh, be more of a summary of how to uh, understand how the changes of state work. And we're going to make this triangle to uh, help to understand them. So. Uh, let's start by looking at what the different corners of this triangle represent. So down in the bottom corner here on the left, uh, what do you think that state of matter is? It is solid. Good guess. And then if we go over here to this, uh, this state of matter inside the container, well, that's going to be liquid. You got it. And up at the top, we've got our uh, cloud here that represents the state of matter. That is, what do you think it is? It is gas. Yes, so uh, now what we're going to do is talk about what happens to those different states of matter to change between each other. So we could go from one state of matter to the other state of matter. Now let's, let's look at our first one here. So the first one, we're going from a liquid to a gas. And these arrows just show that uh, that would be the change of state from liquid to a gas. So uh, do you remember what that one's called? Liquid changing to a gas? It is called vaporization. Now, during vaporization, what happens to make that happen? What do we have to do to the liquid to make it change into a gas? You're right, we need to add heat to it to make that happen. Now, with all these different changes of state, if you know what's happening to the particles, you'll be able to easily determine whether heat is added or removed. So in the case of a liquid, what are the particles like? Are they moving fast or slow compared to a gas? Are they moving closer together or farther apart compared to a gas? So that's how we're going to determine whether heat is added. Because if you add heat, what happens to the particles of matter? Yes, they move farther apart and they move faster. So um, as long as we know that's happening, then we can determine what state of matter it is. Because with a liquid, the particles are closer together and move slower than a gas. So in order to make them change, we need to add heat. Does that make sense? I hope so. Uh, and that would mean that uh, you don't have to memorize whether heat is added or removed. If you can think about what's happening to the particles, at each stage. So let's continue here with our triangle to help us to understand the different changes of state. So if we go from a gas now to a liquid, do you remember what that change of state is called? It is called condensation. Hopefully you got that. Now you do have to memorize the names of the changes of state, so vaporization or condensation, but you don't have to memorize whether heat's added or removed as long as you understand what's happening to the particles. So in the particles of a gas, they're farther apart and move faster than the particles of a liquid. So do we add heat or remove heat? That's right, we remove heat because the particles in a liquid are getting closer together and moving more slowly. Okay, hopefully that makes sense about those changes from gas to liquid and liquid to gas. Now we're going to move on to the next one, uh, and that is a solid now changing into a liquid. What's that, uh, what's that change of state called? It is called melting. And uh, when that happens, are the particles in a, in a solid closer together or farther apart than a liquid? That's right, the particles are closer together in a solid and they're farther apart in a liquid. So in order for that to happen, what do we have to do? Add or remove heat to make the particles move farther apart. That's right, we have to add heat. So heat is added to make something melt. And for the, uh, the next one involving liquids and solids, well, if a liquid changes to a solid, what's that called? Solidification, or a common word is freezing. Now, uh, what happens to the particles when they go from a liquid to a solid? Well, as they become a solid, the particles get closer together. So we need to remove heat. Is this starting to make sense? I hope so. Um, all you'll need to do is just memorize the names of the changes of state, but hopefully understand 
whether heat's added or removed. Now with our last changes of state here, our last two, uh, we're going first of all from a solid to a gas. Do you remember what that is called? That is called sublimation and it skips the liquid stage. It goes straight from a solid to a gas. Now with this one, is heat added or removed to create a gas from a solid? You guessed it, heat is added because the particles move farther apart. And our last one, what's the last one called? Gas to a solid. That is called deposition. And in deposition, well, are the particles getting closer together or farther apart when they become a solid? They are getting closer together, so we're going to remove heat. Uh, so those are the different changes of state and set up in a more organized way than I guess in the notes that I gave you last time, more visual way, really. Um, hopefully that helps you to understand what's happening during the different changes of state. Um, I'll have another video that I'm going to show you about um, the changes of state as well that's attached to this post, uh, and that you can watch that after. That was a change of state triangle. I hope you learned how to uh, keep track of the different types of changes of state. Um, that'll be something you'll need for a test later on when uh, I give you an online test. Talk to you again soon. Bye.